All right, I think the stream should be live now. I'm honestly not sure if anyone's actually going to join and uh, and watch this live. Uh, this was kind of a last minute thing that I set up, but I um, thought it would be fun to solve some programming challenges on stream. I've done it a couple of times and uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. So hopefully everything is... Uh, working here looks like uh audio is coming through and all of that so i'm just going to go ahead and get started here and if uh, anyone happens to join then that's uh that's awesome obviously so basically um the title of this stream is solving programming problems but the instructions are missing and uh so what does that mean well, I found this series of problems on Code Wars, which is uh, a website that you can go on to like practice coding. So there's a bunch of um, uh, coding problems on this website. And uh, there's this whole series, you can see all these links over here, um, this whole series of problems where they don't give you any problem description. So over here it says no story, no description, only thinking and testing, look at the test cases and guess the code. And that's it. So in a normal problem, they'd obviously, you know, give you an explanation, you know, here's the input, here's the output, here's what you're supposed to do, etc. cetera. Um, but in this case, they don't give you any information at all. Um, and, uh, well, the only information they give you is the test cases. And so here's one of them. I took a brief look at this one. I think I know how to solve it. Um, and I've also solved, I guess, the first three of these already just to get a feel for, uh, for how they work. Uh, but there's obviously a lot of them left, so I'm just going to you know, solve a couple and we'll see how long they take. Um, so we get these, these sample tests right here, right? And so, uh, you know, for example, if, if, I, uh, if I get an empty string as input, I return an empty string. If I get a lowercase a as input, I return a capital A, um, you know, A, B, C, I return A, B, C once again. And then there's this, you know, little comment here, it says, you know, do you just convert it to uppercase? Do you just return, you know, s dot upper, where s is uh, s is the parameter? And um, well, obviously, it's not going to be that simple. But uh, you know, the basic idea is they have, you know, a lot of these problems have this, where they'll give you, you know, is it this? Is this the answer? Is it really this simple? And uh, of course, it isn't. So I go ahead. I went ahead and wrote that up here. So you know, just simple return s dot upper, and I can click test down here. And it will run the test, and it's just going to test these test cases uh, here. And obviously, it's going to pass all of those. Um, you know, pretty simple. Then I can hit attempt, and in addition to the test cases that we see, it'll run a bunch of other test cases. And you'll notice here that there's a bunch of random strings. So these test cases will change every single time, and they're randomly generated, so we can't cheat basically. And uh, as we can see the solution doesn't actually work. So, you know, here's some random strings. Uh, for example, this string right here. I, of course, returned it in all capital letters, uh, but the answer should have been like this. And so obviously we can see um, that the last letter is capitalized and the other letters aren't. And, you know, usually the way that these problems go is you have to look at the random strings in order to figure out the algorithm. Because if we just look at these sample tests, you would have no way of knowing because all of the uh, words in these test cases are just one character long. So you'd have no way of knowing that you're only supposed to ca uh, to, um, to capitalize the last character. Um, but then obviously when we run these test cases, we see that. And in this case, this one's pretty simple. So the pattern jumps out immediately. But in uh, some other cases, the pattern is actually a lot more complicated. And, uh, you know, it may not jump out immediately. It may take some time. We may have to think of multiple solutions. And we may even get stuck, to be honest, and have to move on and maybe come back to it. I was solving one of these problems earlier today, and I got completely stuck. And then I went for a walk uh, like an hour later, and I was thinking about it a little bit, and I came up with the answer, um, and it turned out to be correct. So that might end up happening. But this one, I think, is a good introduction because uh, it's pretty simple. Basically, what we want to do is we want to take the input, we want to split it into each word, and then we want to capitalize only the last character of that word, um, and then, you know, obviously put the spaces back and, and return the string. And if we look at these sample cases, obviously it'll work 
uh, in those cases because there's only going to be one uh, letter in each of these words, and so capitalizing the last letter is just, you know, capitalizing the letter, right? Um, so pretty simple. So uh, obviously we don't want to return s.upper, and I'm just going to write this, we're going to use a, a list comprehension. Uh, we're basically going to say, okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to split at the space. Uh, so we want to get each word because we want to capitalize the last letter of each word. And then for each word, we want to select everything uh, up until the last character. And we want to leave that the same. Uh, and then we want to select the last character, which is index negative one. It's the, the, uh, the last one from the end. And this is the one that we want to convert to upper. And then finally, this is going to give us a list of the words where each word is... Uh, you know, capitalized. And so we want to rejoin them with a space, right? And so basically we're splitting at the space to get the individual words. Then for each word, we're taking all of the, uh, you know, the first part, excluding the last letter. We want to leave that the way it is. And then only the last letter we want to convert to uppercase. Uh, and then finally we join with the space again. So let's test this and String index, oh, right, okay. So if the string is empty, uh, then, you know, that's a problem. So, um, you know, basically if the string is empty and I try to get this at index negative one, I'm just gonna uh, do this. So basically if not S, if, if, if S is empty, then we can return an empty string. Um, Maybe not the most elegant way of handling it, but that's fine. And as we can see, this passes all of the cases. So this passes eight uh, of you know these test cases here, and it passes a hundred random test cases. So um, we're pretty confident that this algorithm will work. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. And as we can see, this will work. And then once we submit it, you can also look at um, some of the other, oh, this is so smart. See, we can look at the other uh, solutions and this solution is really, really cool. So what they're doing is they're taking the input string, they're reversing the string, then they're converting it to title case. So title case will capitalize the first letter of each word, but because they reverse the string, it will actually capitalize the last letter of each word right, because we switched the order of all of the letters, and then they reverse it back again. So that's actually super clever, um, and I really like that. And uh, the other ones, yeah, so this one uses a regular expression. They're just searching, uh, basically, they're, for each word, they're substituting that word um, with, uh, you know, the, the, the capitalized version. So they're, they're basically looking for uh, a word character followed by a boundary and so that would be basically the last letter of a word and then they're converting it to uppercase so that's another pretty pretty decent solution and then this is just the the, the simple one where you would loop through instead of using like a list comprehension um, and yeah so it looks like there are a couple of people watching so in case uh, anyone missed it let me just go back to the problem for a second, just to explain again. So we just saw the solution to this problem, right? And so essentially, if we were given instructions for this problem, they probably would have said, given a string, capitalize the last letter of each word in the string. That's what the problem would have been. But we weren't given that problem. We were just given uh, these test cases. And so we had to use the test cases to work out the algorithm and, uh, and figure it out. And so that's basically... Um, it's basically how this uh, this whole thing will go. So this one was pretty pretty simple. Some of them are definitely not going to be this simple. And so we'll move on to another one, problem number five, which once again has the same description. We don't get any information. And uh, I'll just say hello real quick to Alex C and iTech who are watching and posted in the chat. And so now let's take a look at this one. Once again, we don't have any information except for what we have in the test cases. And so 
Um, basically, the hint that they're giving us is, do we want to call a.extend b? And so what that would do is it would take uh, all the elements in b and add them to the end of all of the elements in a. So for example, if we have a list that contains 0 and a list that contains 1, uh, so this would be a right here. And if we extend with b, then it would just add the elements of b after the elements of a, so 0, 1. So in this particular case, uh, it would actually work. Uh, in this case, 1, 2, and 3, 4, it would work. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, in all these, it would work, except for this last one here. So 1, 2, 1, 2, right? If we just did extend, it would be 1, 2, 1, 2, but the actual output is 1, 1, 2, 2. And so uh, the first thing that obviously pops into my head is, well, what if we extend the lists and then sort them, right? Because that would work in all of these cases. In all of these cases, you know, appending the lists would work just fine. In this case, it wouldn't work, but if we appended and then sorted, then they would be fine. So maybe that's the answer. So uh, we can do a.extendb, uh, sorted a. I think I may need to convert that back into a list, but uh, OK. So that passed. Let's attempt it for real. And that didn't work. OK, this is good. So this works, and this is, again, how these problems go. For all of the test cases we're given here, this would work. And so you know you have to look at these uh, test cases over here in order to see what's going on. And obviously, some of these didn't work. Now, as we can see, uh, it's a little bit tricky because for these tests, we're only given, you know, this is what uh, our code output, and then this is what the output is supposed to be. So we don't actually know what A and B are. We just know uh, what our output is and what the output should have been. Now you can print, I could just add print statements for A and B and they will actually show up over here. And so um, that's definitely something that we can do, but it seems like, uh, you know, maybe maybe before we do that, before we look at what A and B are, because that would definitely be a big hint, what if we look at these cases here and see if we can spot anything? Because I'm just seeing that there are some numbers that are repeated um, that maybe shouldn't be. So like if we look at this, for example, this is our output, the first one, and then the correct output is the second one. And the only difference is that our output has a second uh, 14 in there uh, that this output, that the correct output doesn't have. And if we look at that, we'll kind of notice uh, the pattern. So in this one, we have an extra 17. So we have two 17s uh, going out versus um, you know, there's only one 17, but you know, our output is two 19s and this output is two 19s. And so basically what this means is we don't simply want to do a dot extend B. There's some sort of logic where some elements won't actually be added, uh, but some of them will be. And I'm not entirely sure if we think about how that will work. Cause if we look at this example, whoops, if we look at this example here, we have one, two, and one, two, and we're expecting, you know, one, one, two, two. So, hmm. Whereas over here, we're giving the same answer of one, one, two, two, but the answer should have been one comma two. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, you do want to include all of them. Sometimes you don't. Now, what I'm thinking is, all of our answers, okay, yeah, so all of our answers always include extra values. They're, they always have the correct values, but we're including extra values, duplicate values as well. But it's not as simple as just a set. We're not just looking at the, you know, the common uh, answers, obviously. Um, or like, you know, like if you have one, two, three, four, and you know, you, you extend the list and you get one, two, three, four, if you convert it to a set to get the, du the, uh, the unique values, that obviously wouldn't work. In this last case, one, two, and one, two. The unique values would be one and two, but the output should be one, one, two, two. So I'm guessing that there's probably some logic. Maybe there's some sort of uh, a loop where if you look at this one uh, over here and you compare it to this one, and you say, okay, both of them can go in, and maybe you look at this two and this two, and you say they can both go in. But for example, maybe if this were two and one, uh, 
maybe it wouldn't work. Maybe you look at this one and this one is less than the two. Um, and so you say, oh, only one of them can go in, or maybe it's because they're not equal or, uh, or something. So like if they're equal at this position, you know, but that doesn't really work for these other ones. So I think what I'm going to do is, let's see if we can uh, look at what A and B are. Okay, so this is always this always confuses me, but uh, the the uh, the log is above the output. So this right here is one of the test cases. So this input is one one two two, and uh, you know obviously my output's going to be one one two two. Uh, but the answer is supposed to be 1 and 2. And I immediately have an idea. I think what the idea is, and I'm, I'll say the idea and then, then we'll, we'll, we'll check it. I think maybe you want to convert A and B into a set. Convert, convert A into a set and then convert B into a set. Or I guess when I say convert to a set, I mean remove duplicate values. We want to preserve the order, but remove duplicate values. And luckily, Python uh, will preserve the order for us. Um, but basically, if we represent 1, 1 as a set, it would just be the element 1. And if we represent 2, 2 as a set, it will just be uh, the number 2. And then if we uh, extend them, we would get 1 and 2. And uh, once again, that will work with this one. Same thing, 1 and 2. And then we get the answer of 1, 2. This one, uh, we already expect to get 1, 2, 2, 1. Or I guess we sort the output. So yeah, 1, 1, 2, 2. Because this as a set would be 1 and 2. This as a set would be 1 and 2. And so then that will work. And then once again, yep, I think this is the solution. Because this as a set would be 1. This as a set would be 1. And the output should be 1, 1. So I think that's the solution is, um, you know, we'll just say, let me zoom in on this. So let's convert. Uh, a into a set, we'll convert uh, B into a set, or actually I guess what we'll do is we want to convert it to a set, we want to remove duplicate values, and obviously you know you could go through a loop and keep track of what you've seen already and whatever, but we can convert it into a set, which will remove the duplicate values, but it will maintain the order because Python has that guarantee for us, and then we can convert it back into a list, and you know I can just assign this with A and B, and then we can actually call A.extendB, and then we can sort it. And so let's see if this will work. Obviously, it's going to pass uh, all of these test cases because all of these test cases, the lists have uh, unique values. And so here uh, we have, you know, one, two, and here we have one, two. So, uh, you know, within A itself, the one and two are unique. And within B itself, the one and two are unique. And then we combine them together. So that works. And then if we attempt it, awesome, we passed all of them. We passed the nine basic tests and the 100 random tests, which means that we actually solved uh, this problem correctly. And so let's go ahead and submit. And yeah, so like obviously this is the same solution that I had. They just put it all onto one line instead. And uh, this is basically the same idea they're just using a spread uh, operator, a splat operator there. Um, yeah, this is basically the same thing. Yeah, so all of these solutions are are basically uh, the same idea. So yeah, that was uh, that was a pretty fun one. And again, we're not given uh, we're not given any information. And you know, these test cases on their own aren't enough. If I didn't know what A and B were, if I wasn't able to print those out. Could I have figured out the solution? Maybe if I, you know, brute forced it enough, if I really thought about it enough, you know, sometimes some numbers are repeated, sometimes some aren't. Um, but knowing A and B definitely helped. And it may seem like cheating, and you may think it's cheating, and that's fine if you do think it's cheating. Um, but some problems are still hard even when you know what all of the inputs are. Um, so let's move on. Oh, and I'll also say before we do uh, that the, the titles generally seem to be uh, pretty useful here. So this one is unique or not unique. And in this case, it makes sense because we want the elements of A and B to be unique, but the elements in the output don't have to be unique. And in the last one, we had something capitalized. Well, we found out that it was the last uh, letter that was capitalized. So these titles uh, can also sometimes be useful if you think about them. So let's try another one. And let's take a look what we have. So this is called spatiotemporal index. So it looks like we get a list of strings and we're returning a list of strings. 
So 1m, 2m, 3m. I guess these are meters, right? Because I see centimeters and millimeters. Okay. And then we're returning 1m, 2m, 3m. Here we get 3, 2, 1, and we're returning 1, 2, 3. Okay, maybe we're sorting them. Here we get 1 kilometer, 2, geez, I don't even know what that is. I'm American. And then 3 centimeters, and we're returning 3 centimeters, 3, 2, 1 again. So I'm wondering if this is, maybe we're sorting, and all of these values are 1, or I guess these are, you know, 3, 2, 1. But I, it seems like we're we're sorting them Maybe we're sorting first based on uh, the unit, and then we're sorting them based on uh, the, the the number. So let's just keep looking a little bit. So three centimeters is obviously less than a kilometer. So maybe we're sorting from lowest to highest. Uh, we've got millimeter, centimeter, I guess decimeter, right? Decimeter, and then meter, and then kilometer. So again, it still looks like we're sorting um, lowest to highest. Oh, but then that's where it gets interesting. It's called spatio-temporal, right? So we have three meters, or maybe it's minutes. I don't know. But three meters, let's say, and then it's two hours and one day. So how does the sorting work there? This looks like milliseconds, seconds, minutes, hours, days. And then this doesn't work at all. So 1 m milliseconds. Okay, so this one doesn't work. I think I understand. This one doesn't work because you're mixing, you know, here milliseconds and millimeters. There's no way to mix them. Um, here you're missing, mixing days and minutes with decimeters, which you can't do. But this one, uh, three minutes, two hours, one day, and then milliseconds, seconds. Okay, so basically I think it seems like we want to sort them based on uh, the order of the uh, of the unit, you know, so milliseconds is smaller than seconds, but we have to make sure that only uh, one type of unit, whether it's, uh, you know, time or, or, or length is present. And then maybe we need to, I guess we need this tiebreaker to sort by uh, the distance as well. So like one meter, two meters, for example. So, um, okay. So let's take a look at okay there we go. Let's try and uh, let's try and solve this problem. So how do I want to do this? Let's use um let's use I want to use regular expression to split each thing, but I think I don't know if we can assume that each uh each uh, let's just assume that there's only one number. So we're not going to have like 10 meters, for example. And if we are, then we can deal with that later. Um, but basically what I want to do is we want to construct a, a tuple for each element. So, um, you know, we want to convert instead of the string 1m, we want to convert it to 1 and meters. And then we're going to do some kind of a sort. And um, and uh, yeah, so let's do let's do that. So... For each item, we want to say that the amount is, uh, you know, the first number. And again, there may be multiple numbers. We'll deal with that later. And then the unit is going to be uh, everything else. So from index one and on. And then we have the amount, we have the unit. We could convert that into, I guess first, let's just say you know, here's our answer. And then, uh, well, okay, we have our answer. And then let's have our, because we want to keep this, we want to keep this representation, you know, of the amount in the unit separate so that we can do the sorting. And then we're going to return the answer at the end. So let's just do items. And then let's do items.append amount unit. And then. We want to sort it, and then, so just to be clear, this would look, for example, like, so 1m, 1 meter would turn into 1m. That's what it would look like right now, and we might, uh, we might refine that in a bit, but that's what it's going to look like for now, and so if we want to map it back, uh, then we need to do 
this. We can just join them back together because that's all we're doing, right? Is we're just splitting, you know, we're taking the first character as an integer and then the rest as the unit. So we can just join them back together and then that would be our answer. So this should work for the first test case. Uh, why did that not work? Let's see. Oh, because I meant to do item at index zero, my bad. And I meant to do item at index one. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so that passed for the first test and the second test. I'm not sure why it passed this second test because those are in the wrong order. Oh, because I sorted them, that's right. I do have the sort in there. And so when you sort the, the, the tuple, it'll sort by the, the first element. So it'll sort by the number, and then it will sort by uh, the unit, by the, the, the letter after. And so in this case, you know, it's gonna take the three, the two, the one, and that'll be enough for it to sort because we don't have any duplicate values there. So this will pass for the first two, but then obviously uh, these other ones won't because we're just sorting, it's gonna sort these by the number first. And what we actually want to do is we wanna sort them by the unit first and then by the number. And so the first thing we need to do then is we need to swap these around. So if we wanna sort by unit first and then by the number, then unit should come first. And so then uh, our output will look like this. And then the last thing is, you know, obviously since we Put them in the wrong order we have to do we want to output them and so now we're passing actually the first three um but the fact that we're passing the third is a coincidence because right now it's sorting these in alphabetical order so it's sorting um or i guess it's it's the fact that uh that 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 the centimeters and decimeters and kilometers uh will work so give me one moment okay let me just get rid of, there was some uh, some weird comments going on here, some spam comments here. So hopefully those are gone. But, um, so this just so happened to work, but now we need to actually order them by uh, the the units. So, so we want the units to go in the actual order and not just in alphabetical order because millimeter is smaller than a centimeter, um, but obviously, you know, M comes after C in the alphabet. And so the way that we can do this, well, the way we can do it easily is, um, you know, if we had a dictionary or even a list, because we just care about, you know, numbers. If we had, so for example, what I'm getting at is if we had, um, let's do the length units first. And so for the length units, we have uh, millimeter, centimeter, decimeter, meter, kilometer, right? Um, millimeter, centimeter, decimeter, meter, kilometer. I think those are all the length units. And so what we could do is instead of appending the unit directly, we don't you know, want the unit. Um, we want some number that's, that's, uh, that's useful. And so we could actually do length units dot index unit. So for example, um, if this is one M, one meter, well, the index of meter is uh, three, and so this would actually be three comma one. That would be uh, the output, right? And then, um, and then we, when we sort them, sorry, when we sort them, you know, millimeter comes after centimeter in the alphabet, mm comes after cm, but mm has index zero and CM, cm has index one. And so the the uh, the order will actually work out that way. Now, the only issue with this, uh, this is good so far, but when we go to output it, we actually need to convert it back. And so obviously that's, you know, pretty easy because we can just do length units at index, item at index one, right? So uh, item, Oh, no, I'm sorry, this needs to go over here. Length units, right. Because remember, item at index zero is actually the index of the length unit, right? So it's actually meters. Um, and then if we just index, we say length units at index, uh, whatever, it will give us M 
uh, back. So, so this basically we we use this list, we use this index to allow us to sort, but we can go into it and go back out of it. And then the only tricky part is obviously we have length units and we have time units. So we'll, we'll deal with that in a second here. Um, but as you can see, now we're passing four test cases. So we're passing this test case right here because we have, um, you know, now we're actually sorting them in the right order. So millimeters comes before centimeters. We're actually handling for that, uh, which is great. Uh, but obviously, you know, we get the error here because D is not in the list. D is days, and that is, um, that's a time unit. So, okay, let's add the time units. This one's a lot more programming than the other ones I've seen. The other ones I've seen, there's usually just a little trick. Um, but this one just involves some, like, actual programming, which is, which is good. Um, but we've got milliseconds, seconds, minutes, hours, days. So let's go with that. Milliseconds, seconds, minutes... Whoa, hello. Minutes, hours, days. And I think the tricky part about this is, I see. So I think what's gonna be tricky is that the M can stand for meters and minutes. And I think that's why it's called spatio-temporal uh, whatever. So the, the M can stand for either one, but um, obviously we can only have one of them. So we can't mix you know, time, milliseconds, and length, millimeters, but the M is allowed to stand for either minutes or meters, depending on what all of the other values are. So that's uh, that's kind of the interesting uh, twist in, in this problem. And so I think what we can do is when we do this conversion, right, when we convert to the index uh, in length units, or maybe it will have to be time units, um, when we go to convert back, we need to actually remember whether we use length or time, right? Because uh, we need to actually give the correct output. And um, and so we need to know, you know, if this is a, a zero here, are we talking about millimeters? Or are we talking about milliseconds? We need to know uh, which one. And this code is probably more complicated than it needs to be. I think you could probably just write a key function and uh, and do the sorting directly. And, you know, honestly, I think that's a little bit nicer. Let's do that. Same idea, but we're just going to do this a little bit differently. So just like this. Let's clean this up a little bit. Okay. So this should... This should be the same, essentially, and then we're just going to return this. So let's just first let's just make sure that we're still passing. Uh, let's fix the syntax. Okay, we're still passing. So let me just briefly explain what I'm doing here. Um, basically, what I was doing before is, uh, you know, I was converting each uh, each element in the input and then converting it back. But what we can do is uh, we can just call sort and we can create this key function. So we're taking each item and we're converting it into a key and the key is only used for sorting. So we don't have to worry about, you know, creating this tuple for each thing and then, you know, mapping back to the original. We can just, you know, say for the purposes of sorting, this is how we want to sort it, but we don't want to actually change any of the elements. We just want to use this for sorting. And, and that's great. And so what we can do is... Uh, we can we can see and so this is interesting um, I was hoping that the indices would line up that M would be at the same position in either list but unfortunately it isn't um, and so we don't actually know where M hmm, I wonder if this won't work we don't actually know where M will uh, will be Right, we don't know if we see an M. We don't know if it'll be time uh, or if it'll be length. But let's just, you know, try this for now. We're gonna say if the unit is a length unit, then we can do this. Uh, otherwise, it'll be a time unit, and so we'll just do time 
units. Now, the only problem with this is that m is both a length unit and a time unit, which means that right now we'll never be treating it as, uh, as a time unit. And, um, and then let's see what's going on here. And so, yeah, that's the basic idea is that, uh, you know, we're not treating this correctly, so we're kind of out of order. And then we're still also not handling the case where there's different. Okay, so maybe we can't quite do this key approach because we need to we need to know if we have duplicate uh, duplicate items as well, or, or I mean, if we have length and time units mixed uh, together. So, all right, let's uh, let's just go back to what we had before. Unfortunately. Okay, can tab all this over. This is going to be items.add. Okay, and uh, yeah, we'll return items. So, okay, so we have to, we're going to convert them, and then what did we do? We had to convert these back. And you know what, this is gonna get a little ugly, so let's just do it the old fashioned way using a regular old for loop. And so this is gonna be uh, item one, item zero. And I think this was, you know, this is this one here is gonna be either length or length units at index zero or time units at that index. Um, and then, so I think, um, oops, let's append. Let's see if we can wrap this one up quickly. Um, and then this just needs to be, for now it'll be length units. That should get some of them fixed, yep. And so then what we need to do is we just need to keep track of, um, so the first thing we'll do is we need to keep track of three cases basically. So if the unit, is uh, uh, M, then we're not sure, we're not sure uh, which which uh, which uh, unit it is. We're not sure if it's a length unit or a time unit. So we'll just use a sentinel value of none. Um, and then if it's in length units, and then if it's in time units. And we also need to keep track of uh, we need to keep track in this tuple. We need to know, okay, this was a length unit. Okay, this was a time unit because we're going to need that in order to, to get back to where it was before. And then we need something here. Um, so we'll just put a question mark. I don't know. And then what we'll do is we need to figure out what the unit is. Well, it's going to be length. Well, first let's just um, let's just do this. So the unit index is... Uh, or we'll do uh, we'll do amount. Let's just unpack this tuple, right? So amount and uh, and unit index, and then we can use you know we can use amount here, and then we can say unit is okay. Well, if uh, oh it's amount unit index and uh, type, which I'm going to call T. So if T is M, uh, then it'll just be M. Uh, otherwise, length units at index, unit index, if t is l. So if t is a, it's a, it's a length unit, we want to do length units that index. Otherwise, we can do time units at unit index. And then here we just want to put unit. And so we're not, this uh, will still give us some issues here because we have this, this none type. So before we can actually do anything, we need to replace these none. So we need to make sure, first of all, that we have only length and, uh, and only time, or we have only length or only time. We can't mix time and length units, but obviously we can mix these question mark units. And so, um, you know, the first thing that we can do is we can say, this we can say unit types equals uh, yeah this problem is taking a long time if this doesn't work we might move on and come back to it but but we're almost uh, we're almost there 
and we want to we want to set for this. We can just use a set literal, and we can say um, item two for item in items, right? So basically, item in index two is going to be this, this TL and the question mark. We're creating a set because we only care about, and then we're going to say if um, if both L if L is in unit types and T is in unit types, then that means that we're mixing time and length, which is not good. So we can just cut it off right there. Otherwise, we just need to replace all of these nuns with uh, you know whatever the index is. In the case of length units, it's at index three. In the case of uh, time units, it, it's at index two. And so um, I don't know. This is kind of ugly, but so we know that they're both not in there. Let's just say if L is in there, uh, then unit will be L. Or I guess we'll say, um, you know, I don't know, overall unit. This is the unit of, of all of the things. And then otherwise, um, the overall unit can be T. And then we just need to go in and replace, we need to just say for item in items, um, or actually we can't replace elements in a tuple. We need to do this range len items. And then we just need to say if items at index i and then index 0 is none, then that's this case right here. We need to uh, you know, basically set it to be the overall unit. And the overall unit um, I'm just going to do this length units and then L is going to be time units just so that we can easily refer to, we can just say um, items at index I is equal to, so the first thing needs to be the index, which is can just be L dot index um, of M because that's the unit, that's the unit we don't know. The amount is going to be the same. We're not changing the amount. And then the type is going to be, I mean, it can just be overall unit. And then that actually gets rid of this case right here because we won't have, um, uh, well, this should be a question mark anyways, but we won't even have that. I don't know. Let's just see if this works. Um, oh, right. It's not is in, it's just in. My bad. Okay, so now I'm mapping. I'm not mapping it back correctly for some reason. Um, oh, because this is in the wrong order. It's supposed to be unit index and then amount. Okay, good. And then we're feeling okay. Now we have this case where. Um, uh, where there can be multiple length, uh, the numbers can be, I was basically here, I was just assuming that amount would be a single number, uh, a single digit, whereas now it can be multiple digits. Um, so honestly, we can just change that. We just have to change these two lines right here and, uh, and everything else will be the same. And so what we can do is uh, for the item, we need to do a uh, regular expression. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to mess this up, and I might have to look it up. But we want to match um, a word character. Well, we want to match one or more digits, and then we want to match one or more uh, letters. So let's just do like that. So this will match one or more digits, followed by one or more letters. And we want these to be in separate groups. And then we're passing here item. We're going to say matches is equal to that. And I'm pretty sure this is not going to work the first time, but the basic idea is that we want to do this. Or that might be group one, but, but we'll see. And then this is like this. So we, we find, you know, we match uh, this regular expression. And then the first group, this group right here should be the, the, the amount. And then this group right here should be the unit. I'm pretty sure this is not going to work, but, uh, but we'll see. Invalid literal for base 10. 
uh, I don't know. This is just a little debugging here. So let's see. Um, okay. Can we look at the, so it matched correctly. Can we look at the groups? Okay, it's a function. It's called groups. Okay, so that gives us one. Okay, that's fine. Then we can just do, um, you can see that this worked, right? It gave us one and M. So we can just do um, just groups zero and groups one. I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, looks like we're passing a lot of them. I think there's maybe one case we're not handling. So let's just see if we can get this quickly. If not, then, okay, millimeter, decimeter, centimeter. I think I, uh, oh, wait a second. The output millimeter, decimeter, centimeter, centimeter, and then there's decimeter. Okay, I think you have to do the actual conversions. Ah, jeez. I think the only thing that I'm missing is the fact here I'm assuming if I do these conversions, well, okay, 8,000 centimeters versus 6,000 decimeters. Is, is 8,000 centimeters less than 6,000 decimeters? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I guess we could, let's just try and look this up real quick. I'm not really familiar. I know it's just like a unit uh, let's just do this. So this is 800 decimeters and it comes before this is six, uh, oh, this is 6,000 decimeters and this is, uh, 800 centimeters. So I think you actually, I don't like this problem. This is, this is very different than the other problems that I've run into because, um, this one is like more of an actual programming problem. I did like the thing where the M can mean minutes or meters, but um, this I don't really feel like doing this right now. It's it's pretty easy. You just have to, um, at least for the you know the length units, it's pretty easy. For the time units, it's a little bit uglier because there's 24 hours in a day, but there's 60 minutes in an hour, whatever. You basically just have to, when you're, when you're comparing them for the, uh, for the sorting, you have to, uh, convert them. Basically we could convert all of these into the same unit, you know, say millimeters or, or meters, you know, could be the standard unit. If you convert them all like that and then, you know, you do it and then you can convert them all back. It's just kind of ugly. Um, but you know, we got pretty close with that one. So maybe we'll come back to that. I don't know. But, uh, but let's try another one here. Maybe this one will be, I think this one will be less actual coding and more just trying to figure out what's going on. So let's take a look at these. I like this. This is a mystery. So we've got all of these elements that have, uh, or all of these four element lists here. And we've got, if they're all zero, the output's zero. Zero, 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 one, the output zero. I'm immediately sort of thinking of binary, but obviously it's not a direct binary um, conversion, but I'm seeing a lot of zeros and ones. Now it's possible that we'll see, I'm sure we'll see lists that have more than four elements because we have all the test cases here. Um, I don't know if we'll see elements, you know, other than zero and one, we might see some twos that might change things. But right now I'm kind of thinking binary, but uh, okay, zero, one, zero, one is zero. This is a one. This is a one. This is a zero. And then the only time that we have a two in these test cases is when all of them are ones. And the first thing that I'm noticing, hmm, I don't know. I'm trying to look for a pattern what makes it a zero makes it a one. And my first thought was, okay, maybe if there's at least, maybe if there's two ones in a row, so like here there's two ones in a row, here there's actually three ones in a row, but you know, the output's one. Um, here there's only one one, so that doesn't work. And then here it does work, but maybe it'll wrap around. So, you know, maybe that's the answer, but like here it's one, zero, one, zero. They're completely disconnected. Um, and so it doesn't work. And then, you know, this one, you could argue it wraps around or whatever, but there's still one 
uh, contiguous set of ones. And then here, I mean, they're all connected, but and then it's two for some reason. So that was that was my initial thought there, but but I'm not sure if that's the right answer. So I was thinking that I was thinking maybe if we want to go with the binary and I kind of do want to, I mean, these are all in order, which obviously it makes sense to do them in order, but they're in numerical order. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, all the way up to 15. So just um, to write these out, because maybe if we're going with the binary and they have used uh, binary stuff before, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is a binary one, but um, let's just do this because it'll be easier to think about. Maybe we can figure out some sort of relationship between uh, the decimal numbers or maybe hexadecimal or something. We can figure out the, the relationship between, if we treat these as binary, maybe there's a relationship that comes up. Uh, and then 15. Okay. So let's see. I was thinking maybe something with even or odd, but that doesn't seem to be panning out. I was thinking, hmm, one zero one zero one zero one. I'm not sure. I'm thinking there's a. I'm thinking there's a a a, a, a binary relation here. I guess if we test it and we we end up getting um. We end up getting all. Uh, you know, like uh, I'm not sure. Let's just let's just see what the output looks like. Okay, so these are obviously pretty pretty big numbers, but I guess let's just let's take a look at a. Let's just see if a is all zeros and ones. No, it's not. Okay, so I think that can throw the binary idea out of the out of the question. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. So it's not all zeros and ones. And again, this is one of the things that these do is they try to try to trick you like that. But okay. So that idea goes out the table, off the table, I guess. Um, hmm. Can we, maybe there's some sort of a, uh, okay, now I'm thinking what if there, what if we insert plus signs and minus signs between them? Well, that wouldn't work here because we just have a one. Maybe there's multiplication signs involved or division signs involved. Um, you know, like for example, if we had this one and it ended up being, you know, one minus one, we put a, a minus sign in there and we got zero, you know, zero plus one or zero minus zero plus one minus one, and we'd end up getting zero. Um, I don't know. But I don't. But that wouldn't work in this case, right? We would need. We would need multiplication or division in between these two numbers in order to get rid of that one. So maybe that doesn't quite work. But I guess if we look at some of these, you know, first of all, what's uh, eleven plus fifty plus fourteen plus twenty one? That's 96, and the answer is 931. What if we multiply them together? Because I was thinking maybe there's multiplication involved in there. Well, it's way too big. Can we multiply? Maybe there's only one uh, 50, 14. I don't know. I'm just trying some different things out over here. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's see. Um, this is supposed to be 931. Why is that true? How can you get to 931? I'm just trying, let me make sure this is in in the actual stream. I'm just, I just pulling up this uh, this calculator here so I can play with some numbers. For, I'm just thinking maybe if there's like two numbers that you want to multiply or maybe it's like 11 divided by 50. Well, I don't know if there's division involved. Maybe integer division because um, because all of these are whole numbers. So if we did regular division, 
I'd be surprised that it would work out. So 11 divided by 50, it work, we'll call it zero for integer division. Yeah, and then we end up with the zero and then, you know, whatever, we're ending up with zero. So that's not quite right. Hmm. I'm feeling pretty stuck on this one, but I don't want to give up just yet. We see that all of these have four elements. All of the lists have four elements. We don't know how big the, the, the numbers in the list are going to be. It's seeming like they're between 1 and 100, but I don't think that's important. The important thing, though, is that all of these lists have four elements in them. And so if there's some sort of a pattern, like maybe certain, like, okay, what if, uh, hmm, no, I was thinking maybe there are certain indices we want to ignore, like we don't care about this last index, index three, because, you know, here there's a one there, but if we ignore it, you know, we'll get a zero. And then, you know, again, maybe we don't care about these two, because if we ignore both of them, we get a zero. But then, you know, there's this one, which we'd have to ignore as well, and then this one, so that doesn't quite work. Maybe it has to do with, are there any repeating numbers? It looks like there aren't generally repeating numbers. I was thinking if, you know, some number repeated twice in the list, you'd ignore it or you wouldn't ignore it or it would be special in some way. Um, and what is this called again? Math of primary school. Okay, that's really making me think addition, subtraction, multiplication, division kind of stuff. Maybe even addition, because there's another one called uh, Math of Middle School. So I'm thinking, you know, primary school, I'm thinking addition, subtraction. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. But we're getting these, we're getting these big numbers. It can't just be addition and subtraction. It has to be multiplication and division involved in there somehow. So like maybe, you know, I'm looking at this 56, 7, 40, whatever. So if we do 56... Uh, times 7 divided by, uh, you know, plus 41. Mm, no, it's not going to get big enough. What if we take, and then, the, you know, if we take the two largest numbers and multiply them together, the answer gets way too big. We're looking for 3,000. We're getting, uh, or we're, we're actually not getting too much, plus 7 plus 41. That's not getting us quite high enough. 56 and then 56 times 51 plus 7 plus 41. 7 times 41. Okay, look at that. 56. Okay, I think I'm starting to see something. Uh, I'm looking at this one right here. So the the um, the the inputs 56, 7, 41, 51, and the outputs 3, 1, 4, 3. And I managed to get that. I did 56 times 51 plus 7 times 41. And my logic was uh, multiply the two larger numbers together, multiply the two smaller numbers together, and then add them. Let's see if that works on another one. Let's try this one here. So 99 and 71 are the two bigger ones, and then 10 and 18 are the two smaller ones. And that didn't work. That gave us 7,000. Um, so, okay, well, looking at this one again, maybe it's the first and the last element, and then it's the middle two elements, because that would also happen to work. So 10 times 99 18 times 71. Okay, I think that's the answer. I think you take the first and last element to multiply them, and then you take the middle two and multiply them, and um, and then you add the result together, and that definitely looks. I'm just looking at some of these test cases, and yeah, I think that's the answer. So let's give this a try. So we're going to take um, the first element and the last element and multiply them together, and then we want to take the middle two elements and multiply them together and add the result together. And then if we take a look, looks like we got it, okay. Yeah, these are these are the problems that I'm more interested in um, because the code was obviously completely trivial. You could even do it with a calculator. You don't need to write code for it. But just the way that you, uh, you know, take this problem that's super unclear and you try different things and get to it. The other one we were doing with the, the time units, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't feeling the same because uh, we basically figured that out pretty quickly. But this one, you know, you really got to figure out the puzzle before you can get it. So um, I like that. And, and um, yeah, this is basically the answer that I gave. And there's no other way that you're, uh, that you're going to do this. 
this is kind of clever that they're destructuring the tuple in the um, function. I didn't even know you could do that. That's actually really cool. I like that. Um, this is, I don't know. They're just taking the first and last elements and removing them and then first and last removing them. So I don't know. Uh, basically, um, I like this foil. Uh, that's like the, I think that's the multiplication thing, right? Where you have A, a plus B times uh, like C plus D. And then, uh, and then you foil them or something. So that's kind of clever. But again, same same solution. So we've got this one done. Let's go to, and again, the title there was helpful: Math of Primary School. And and you know, we got the addition, we got the multiplication in there. Let's look at Math of Middle School. This is uh, probably going to be a bit trickier because now we have two lists of elements. I'm gonna assume that each list contains four elements because that was the same as last time, but instead of one single list, we're getting two separate lists. And we're talking about math of middle school, so I don't think it's gonna be just addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. I think it's going to be something more involved. What do you do in middle school? What did I do in middle school? Algebra and, uh, and uh, geometry right i don't know maybe there's some algebra involved in here but um but let's take a look so the pattern i'm noticing immediately we've got two lists of four elements i'm assuming that's the case our output is going to be one list of four elements and it's seeming like there's uh, only one element that is non-zero and then the question is how do we calculate that element and and how do we uh, know where it goes? So I'm thinking, you know, so first of all, what's 34 times 77? That's 2618. Because I was thinking, you know, you say, okay, 34 and 77, multiply them together, and then they're at index zero, so you stick it at index zero. Is that what you do? Well, not quite. Because um, we're getting, uh, we're not getting quite close enough. But actually, how far off are we? Well, we're, uh, I was thinking maybe you add 18 and 19, the ones that we didn't use, um, but that didn't quite work. Now I'm thinking, so, okay, index zero is the only index here where there's a number in both, because here we have a number in index one, but we have a zero over here, a number in index one, but a zero, or a number in index two, but a zero over here. And once again, that holds here, index one is the only one where we have numbers in both and again index two, and again index three. So I think the way that we determine uh, which index we want to return in our list here is uh, based on which index um, there's a number in both lists. So, and you know, obviously in this case, you know, there's no numbers, they're all zeros. Um, but hopefully that makes sense, right? The fact that there's a number at index three here and a number at index three here means that our answer is going to be in index three and you know here there's a number in index two but there isn't a number in index two here there's a number in index one here but not over here so that's the idea um, and i'm assuming that the numbers at the indexing question are important like this 88 and the 99 are important so if i multiply them together we're getting 8712 um, it's a little bit short of the 10,000, and then you know, what do we what do we have left? We have 83 and, and 27 left. Okay, interesting. Then I just tried multiplying. Then I tried multiplying. I said we have an 83 left. We have a 27 left that we haven't used. Let's multiply them together and add it to the result. And that actually ended up working. So that's interesting. Let's try that with this other one. So the common index here is index 2. So 96 times 53. And then... Uh, what's left over? There's a 49 left over, and uh, and there's an 86 left over. And this doesn't work actually. So this one doesn't quite work. So 96 and 53, and the leftovers were a 49 and an 86. And so I try multiplying them together and adding it, and we're falling short. We're getting 9,000 instead of 10,000. So that's really interesting <clears throat> that it worked. Okay, how much are we off by? 10, 8, 5, 3. We're off by, wait, 9,000. All right, I need to put this in parentheses. Wait, no, no, no. 
Uh, we're off by 1,551. I wasn't sure if that, you know, if we were off by some amount, that would be interesting. Okay, let's look at this one really quick. 88 times 100. And then what do we have left is uh, uh, 22 times 100. And we want to add these, not multiply. And that gives us the right answer again. Did I make a mistake? Hang on, let's just try this other one. So 34 times 77. Um, and then what do we have left over? We have an 18 left over and a 19 left over. Okay, did I make a mistake with this one? Because the this pattern holds for all the other ones. A 96 and a 53. And then what do we have left is a 49 and an 86. No, I didn't make a mistake there. Um, 86 and a 49. So there's something special. The, the pattern doesn't hold here, but it, but it holds in all the other ones, which I think is interesting. Um, and I see someone ask, what's the website? I believe if you look in the description, I should have it linked um, to one of the problems. And then, you know, there's this nice index. So we're on uh, Math of Middle School, which is number eight. So if you click the link in the description, um, it'll take you to one of these problems. And you can just click on the link for number eight. And uh, yeah, by all means, feel free to play along at home. And if you come up with an answer, uh, just don't spoil it unless I need a hint. But feel free to play along. These are a lot of fun. That's why I'm doing this. Um, but okay, so my pattern of, you know, you look at the, the, the number, you look at the index that's, that's common between the two lists, you multiply those together, you take the extra ones and you, you, uh, and you add them together. And then, uh, and then, you know, you get your answer and you put it at this index. It almost works. It works for all of them except for this case. And what's special about this case? I'm thinking, does the position of the other numbers matter? Because, okay, maybe, right? Because the position that they have in common matters because that's the position, the index where the answer is supposed to go. But if we look, okay, this 49 is, is extra, you know, it doesn't, this is one of the extra numbers. The 49 and the 86 are extra. And the 49 is at index three and the 86 is at index zero. So maybe, um, you know, there's a, something missing there. There's a four, you know, the, the, the index there makes a difference. Because if we look over here, um, this is one where the pattern, my, my solution did hold, because we did 34 times 77, plus we had an 18 left over and a 19 left over, we get the right answer. So the 18 is at index uh, one, and the 19 is at index two. Okay, two minus one is one, maybe we multiply you know, this by one or something. And then, and then, you know, we still obviously get 2960. Um, this is one where it did hold, uh, here the extra is at index four. No, cause see, uh, this one, the, the extra number is at index three and then index zero, but this, this did work for us. We didn't want to change this answer. This is the answer we wanted to change. Cause this one, we were getting a little bit too small. And again, we have, the difference, I don't know why it keeps doing that. The differences are at index three and index one. Those are sort of the, the extra uh, numbers here. And so I was thinking maybe whoop, maybe we need to, to, to use that as a correction factor. So, uh, you know, 49 times 86, those are the, the two that, no, what am I doing? Uh, 96 and 53. Those are the two that correspond. And then we have a 49 left over and an 86 left over. That puts us too far below. But what if we multiply this by, uh, you know, some value or we add something's missing. What was missing? 1,551, I think, was missing. I'm not sure. I think, honestly, we've gotten a lot of mileage out of these test cases here, which usually you can't do, but I feel pretty good about um, about these test cases. So let's let's implement the solution that I had um, that that I was thinking of. It works for all of them except for one, and then and then we can look at some more test cases. But basically, what I want to do is first I want to find the index where both numbers. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it like this. 
So let's just sum A and, uh, and we'll sum B, right? And now we want to find the index. Uh, well, let's just assume, I'm assuming the length is four. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're listed of more elements, but I'm assuming it's four. So we'll see. Um, but I want to find the index uh, where both A and B have a non-zero value. So we're going to say if A at index I and B at index I. Basically, if A at index I is not zero and B at index I is not zero, then this is interesting. And so then we'll say, um, you know, the, the, the first term that we're interested in is A at index I times B at index I. And then the second term that we're interested in is the product of the two numbers that are not interesting. And for someone asking, uh, yes, this is Python. Someone asked, what about Christmas? Um, I don't celebrate Christmas. I'm Jewish. I'm wearing a, a, uh, a Christmas sweater because, uh, cause I like this sweater, but, um, um, but yeah. And the sweater is, uh, it's written in, uh, in Spanish. It says Feliz Navidad. And it has a little picture of a dog on there. So just a kind of a, a bad, uh, a bad pun. I guess it's a bilingual pun because it only makes sense in English if you if you know the Spanish as well, but I don't know. I just thought it was fun for the for the holidays. Um, but anyways, so the point here is um, is that we found an element in A and an element in B that we want to multiply together, and then we want to multiply together the two other elements. Well, instead of searching for where those other two elements are, let's just subtract the one for the element now uh, that we use from A from the sum, and then uh, we'll subtract from B, uh, the B sum, the element we used in B. And now A sum is just gonna have, you know, this one element that we didn't use, and B sum is gonna have just this one element that we didn't use, and then we can multiply them together. So we can basically return uh, first, which is the sum of the two that we cared about, and then, uh, you know, we can multiply what's left of A sum with what's left of B sum. And I think this should pass for all except for that one test case. Um, oh, and this is failing uh, for for this, uh, for the case where they're all zeros. And so what we can do is we can add a break here because once we find the index, uh, I think there's only gonna be one. And then we can have an else statement um, which basically means this break never triggered, which means we never found what we were looking for, which means that we're in this case of all zeros. And we can just return A because it's all zeros and, and whatever. We could return a list of all zeros. Um, oh, and then of course we're returning uh, just the single number instead of the actual uh, index that we care about, the, the number in the index. So what we need to actually do is we need to return uh, zero, well, let's just say, let's just do this, zero, 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 zero. And then we're gonna say answer at index i and i should leak scope out of the for loop. So it should still exist here. So we're starting with the zeros, we're setting index i and then, uh, and then we're returning the answer. So that works for all except for that one case, which is what I expected. So let's just see how this fares. It looks like it's failing everything. And then look at this, all of these answers have uh, multiple numbers. So I think my solution was completely wrong. Um, I was thinking there would only be one uh, one number of interest, but it turned out to not be the case. That's the problem with these puzzles. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but let's take a look at, uh, at the inputs. Okay. So yeah, it looks like my solution was completely wrong. We know that we're getting two lists. We know that each list has four elements and there must be some, my guess is that there must be some operation happening. I wonder if I'm on the right track because if you think about it, you know, if you look at the, the basic idea where you take the elements of the two indices and you multiply them together and then you add the other elements that are that are left, that would still work in these cases because in all the other cases, you know, the other elements are zero. So you multiply them together uh, and you get zero. Although I guess if you add something, you wouldn't get zero anymore. So there might be something there. Um, but, you know, the fact that you're multiplying them together, you know, and there's zeros there, that, that, that makes some sense to me. Let's take a look at this first test case. What's 38 times 96? 3,000. 
745. 3,648. And then, uh, you know, what are the numbers that are left? Um, well, we use the 38 and the 96, so we're going to end up with a 67, a 90, a 41, a 31, a 91, and a 25. So these are all the numbers that we have left. And then, obviously, you know, if we go to multiply, you know, do another multiplication, that's going to be way too big. Or if we tried to multiply all of these numbers together, it would immediately become too big. So, hmm. I was really thinking, you know, you take that first index, you know, you multiply those numbers together, you do some sort of an addition uh, or something with all the leftover numbers. Let's just look the output for a second. All these numbers are fairly large. I'm immediately drawn to this because it's the smallest number that I've seen so far. And I'm seeing like a two here, which is pretty small. And I mean, none of these, maybe the two and the 13 are the smallest numbers. Okay, what if, uh, what if there's something to do with the order, the way that the, like if you look at them from smallest to largest, and I, I think I tried that already though, right? Did I try? So this one I was doing, this one I, I tried 96 times 53 plus 49 times 86, right? And that gave me a number that was too small. Uh, what if I tried the two largest numbers and then the two smallest numbers? 10, 8, 5, 3. That actually works. The two largest and the two smallest. Now, was that, does that mean the rest of these were a coincidence? Uh, yeah, these are the two largest. These are the two smallest. Um, uh, well, these are the two largest numbers total, 100 times 100 and then 88 times 22. So that doesn't work. But if we say that this is the largest number in this list, and this is the largest number in this list. Okay, so maybe that's what you do. You take the larger num the largest number in each list, multiply them together, the largest number in each other list, multiply them together. Um, and then I don't know about how the ordering will work, but let's let's try that for a second. So the largest number in this first list is 82. The largest number in this list here is 84. And that gives us 6888. That doesn't work. Uh, 6888, right, yeah. So the largest number is 82. The largest number is 84. I'm trying to see if I can get a number that will show up. I think this goes with this one. I don't know. Let's just go back up to the top for a second. So, so this one goes with this one, right? So the largest numbers are 96 and 90. And that's, you know, that's none of the answers there. Uh, this is a 90 here. This is a 96. Well, actually, there's 96 and 91 are the two largest, but that's still not an answer. You know, 8,736. I don't know how well you can see this, but I'm just typing numbers in here, and the answer shows up over here. Um, hmm. That's so interesting. I guess it's the fact that, that there's a lot of zeros here. I think this is in, this is like very misleading because the fact that there's a lot of zeros, you know, there's only four non-zero numbers in each of these cases. So I could find something that looks like a pattern here, but it's not actually a pattern. It's just that there are fewer numbers. So there's fewer ways that you could sort of arrange all of those numbers. Whereas, you know, over here we have a total of eight numbers. So there's, you know, more, more going on. This is, this is, uh, this is interesting. Okay, and it's called middle school math, right? It's called math of middle school. And when we had uh, math of primary school over here, it involved um, multiplication and addition. And now I'm trying, basically my thought so far has been, you know, a more complicated approach, but you end up doing multiplication and addition and maybe that's not the right approach i'm trying to think of math of middle school i'm thinking of geometry and um and i'm thinking of 
algebra. And I feel like algebra is the real, um, the real core, like math of middle school kind of thing. So I'm thinking of algebra and I'm thinking of, uh, of multiplying, of, um, of solving for X kind of thing. You know, do these represent uh, equations of some sort? Um, I don't know. Is this like, are we, are we, are we solving for something? Are we trying to find uh, a zero? You know, if, if you treat this as like x cubed, 38x cubed plus 68x squared plus 90x plus 41, and then you're solving some, I, I really don't think that's the answer, but I'm just trying to, trying to use the title here to, to help me out a bit. But I'm not, I'm not getting it. 38 plus 67 plus 90 plus 41. So let's just add all the elements in the first list. Let's add all the elements in the second list. You know, are these supposed to be addition? Addition. Yeah, and obviously the number we get is going to be way too big. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to see... I don't know, I'm trying to reverse engineer how do we get, let's go back. I may move on, uh, I may move on in a bit if we get stuck. Cause some of these problems, you know, you just get stuck on and and, uh, and that's okay. I was looking, I'm just looking for these small numbers. Like the 753 is relatively small. I guess here we have two small numbers, 771 and 834, relatively speaking, they're they're small. And uh, and then I'm looking for corresponding small numbers up here. We have an eight, a thirteen, and a ten, and those are relatively small numbers. And can we do something? You know, okay, we have eighty, and then can we use these other numbers to get up to eight thirty? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. That's that's just sort of my my approach, um, yeah. This one has duplicate numbers over here, but the outputs are all very large. The output this the 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 output does uh, in some way correlate with the the or I should say the the size of the numbers in the output correlates with the size of the numbers in the input. It definitely looks like that because when we see these smaller numbers over here we usually see some smaller numbers in the input. And if we see a really big number like this, then we see some really big numbers in the output. So I'm kind of trying to think, you know, can I use the big numbers in some way to make this big number? Or if I come across a small number, can I use the small numbers in some way to make a small number? I don't know. And I'm trying to think, I don't know, middle school math. I think I'm gonna come back to this one. So like I, I said at the beginning of the stream, uh, I was doing another one of these problems earlier today and I got stuck and uh, and I just moved on. And then um, after like an hour, I was going for a walk and I thought about it and I came up with the, the answer in my head. And I actually pulled the problem up on my phone so that I could try it out, and my my answer ended up being correct. Um, so maybe we'll come back to this one, maybe we won't. But I think I want to move on so we can make some progress on something. All right. So this is a string a string manipulation question here. Let's just see. We've got a. Yeah, okay, so um, Nikolai here is making a, a point saying the problem statements in and of themselves are still interesting because there are still different solutions and different implementations. This reverse engineering from test cases is a little weird. Yeah, it is definitely weird to be looking at the test cases to figure out the solution. The problem is that there are some cases where you really have to do that um, because some of these problems... Like we looked at this uh, this capitalized problem 
Um, this was the first one that we did. And these were the test cases we were given. And the answer to this turned out to be that you have to capitalize the last letter of each word. But there's no way that you could know that from these test cases because all of the words are only, you know, one letter long. So you'd have to, um, you know, you, you could write the solution, which is basically just calling, you know, the upper method to convert to uppercase. And that would work for all of these. But when you try to actually run it, um, you know, it would fail. And then you'd look at what's failing and you say, oh, I need to capitalize the last letter of each word. So it is weird to look at the test cases and um, and try to reverse engineer the answer. And, you know, you could argue whether or not it's cheating to um, to actually look at, you know, like to actually look at A and B separately because uh, they don't show it to you by default. I had to actually print that out. So maybe that's cheating uh, if you uh, if you want to think about it that way. But some of these, I just don't know how you would be able to do them otherwise. But we can take a look at this one. Let's just see if we can do anything here. So our lives from the beginning of nothingness ending in nothingness. And okay, they're talking about beginning. Beginning in nothingness, that's to me sounds like empty string or maybe white space or something ending in nothingness. And here they even say click submit to try more test cases. So, you know, I don't think they're giving us everything here. But the thing that I'm noticing, so it's interesting, when we have an empty string or we have just the letter A, the answer is null. But here we have some white space and the answer is empty string. Here we have an A surrounded, well we have A with white space on one side and the answer is just A. We have an A with white space on both sides and the answer is A. So notice that when we have white space on at least one side, which is this case and this case and this case, then the output is, you know, the, the answer. Whereas in this case, well, I guess in this case, we have uh, the output on one side. We have the output over here, or uh, sorry, we have white space over here on one side. And here we have white space over here on one side. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking white space, because I'm thinking beginning of nothingness, ending in nothingness. You know, this string begins with white space, but it doesn't end with white space, but we're still keeping that A around. You know, we're beginning with white space, ending with white space. You know, here we have two A's with one white space, but here we have three A's and two white space, and that doesn't work. And then we have two white spaces. I was thinking maybe you count the number of white space compared to, you know, the number of spaces compared to the number of letters, but um, that doesn't really work with these two cases. Um, you know, and this one as well. Hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm trying to, I think these two right here are really throwing me off because we have one space followed by two A's and two spaces followed by three A's. And I'm trying to think if the number of spaces corresponds with the number of letters. And I guess if you throw this third one in here, that also throws it off because, um, you know, here we have AA, A, well, one space AA, A. here we have two spaces A and a, and a, uh, a curly brace. So I'm wondering if we, I'm wondering if like the white space is consuming, well, but it's not because it's either, and in all these cases, we either have all of the output or we, or we have none of it. I was thinking maybe, you know, there's two white spaces, so two of the A's get consumed or something like that, but that doesn't appear to be it either. I'm not sure about this one. Let's uh let's let's take a little bit more. Let's take another look. Basic test. Um Oh, this is in JavaScript. Oh, this one doesn't even have uh I was so confused for a second, but um I mean we can solve this in JavaScript, but but we don't have uh we don't have Python here anymore. So this is just returning question mark 
or null. And this this is interesting because saying question mark or null. I guess it's or null because some of these are null. So I guess what can we put in the question mark that may or may not be null? You know, that would, you know, for the empty string or for just the letter A, it would be null. So I'm feeling like this might be a hint as well. But let's look at some of these a little bit. Ugh, and this is really, do these test cases involve, I think it's just the way that these are being printed is, yeah, this is really ugly. It's expecting A and it got question mark, but it's like escaping these quotation marks. That's really ugly. I don't know why it's doing that. That must be an issue with the way this is running. But I guess here it's telling us what the what the strings are. So like two exclamation points, one exclamation point. And I guess there's a print statement somewhere that I can't see. I don't know. Let's, let's see if we can if we can do one. Are all the rest of these going to be in JavaScript? That's a shame. I wonder how hard these get. Hmm. So it does seem like all the rest of these are in JavaScript, which is fine. But let's see if we can find one that doesn't involve strings because that output was like really ugly and I didn't want to deal with that. I'm assuming that this is, well, it's not going to compile first of all. But let's see if this output looks any better. Yeah, see, this is, I, I don't really feel like dealing with this where it has, it's expected, this is empty string, it's just two quotes, and then it got, you know, obviously with the question marks. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's find one with a with a with a number involved. Maybe this one. A mini Sudoku. Okay, this. So now we have. Oh, interesting. So we have a two D list, two D array as our input, and the output is another two D array, and it looks like. X is, is missing. Uh, so let's look here. There's two X's missing, but all of the numbers that are not X stay the same. And the numbers, uh, the, the X's, I, I think we're, we're just trying to... So I guess there could be a bunch of X's and we have to determine what those X's are supposed to be. So that's kind of interesting. And so we see some of 15, and that sounds like a magic square, right? But let's, let's look at this for a second. So 4 plus 9 plus 2, this is 15. This line sums to 15. Um, six, uh, 6 plus 8 is 4. Yeah, this sums to 15, and then this uh, is sums to 8, and then we need a 7 there, and then there's a 7 missing. And then if we look at this test case, um, this sums to 7. Uh, so this X would have to be an eight because we have, um, you know, if we do eight plus six is 14 plus one is 15. So this would be an eight, but then it's kind of interesting because we end up with, we start like with this and then we have to solve the, the rest of them, but there's no clear point to go. I guess basically at this point you, to solve it, you'd have to say, okay, well, what's 15 minus eight uh, is seven. And then you'd have to say, okay, well, how can we make seven? Uh, well, one and six, we've already used one and six, uh, two and five, three and four. And then we say, okay, well, um, you know, then we do it with the other ones. So how do we do this? We do it with uh, two and five, um, two and five, or three and four. I don't know. And then, you know, you'd, you'd solve it with this one. You'd say, Okay, 15 minus 1 is 14. How do you make 14? Well, you could do 9 and and uh, 9 and 
five or you could do whatever and you come up with all the answers and then you just have to find a set of constraints that works so like for example um you know two and five will make seven but you know it turns out we need the two here we need the five here so we end up using four and three so i'm not going to solve this one because um it's not really the kind of problem that we're looking for this is another one of those problems where you're just really writing uh, a bunch of code and I think we've already solved, you know, how this works. And the title honestly completely gave this one away, which is a shame. Um, but okay, so I think we've got we've got we've got that one taken care of, at least in terms of thinking about it. This uh, try to write code for a mobile phone emulator. So, okay, I, this this just seems like, this doesn't seem, so you write an incoming call function that sets ring to be the ring to, you, you're just looking up the contact that corresponds with this, and then it connects and hang, yeah, there's, this is completely uninteresting. Uh... Yeah, this is, I don't even know why this is one of them. Like, sure, there's no description, but the test cases tell you exactly what to do. Okay, that's not good. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's just look. Let's see, we're already an hour and a half into this, so we might wrap it up soon, but maybe we can find one more to do before we wrap this up. Um, how about this? A happy day will come. Launch the air rocket. We can hear three, two, one launch. These test case test cases only work in 2017. Maybe they have something to do with the date. One one. So we're given one one through six six. And I'm thinking, hmm. And the the, the answers don't go in sequential order. So 90, 58, 29, and then we jump to 362. These look like dates. The fact that they say they only work in 2017 and the fact that these numbers are between, I guess, 0 and 365, uh, I'm thinking they're like days of the year, maybe. And then I was thinking, you know, maybe this is the month and this is the day. That obviously doesn't work. You know, January 1st, we're saying 90. Okay, you know what? Maybe, here's what I'm thinking. I think there's a there's a certain date in 2017, and this is telling the distance, or, or there's a certain date in general, and this is telling the distance. So January 1st is 90 days away from this particular date, and uh, February 2nd is 58 days away from this date. And that makes sense, right, because 90 minus 58 is uh, 32, and we're going from January 1st to February 2nd. That sounds about right. And then, okay, uh, March 3rd. And then April 4th, it's 362. So now it's like the next year. We've gone past the date. So sometime in, well, I guess we could figure it out pretty easily, right? Is it is it March uh, March 30th? Um, March 30th, or, or what am I saying? Uh, March 1st or, so, okay. So let's just do this. So the date, so 4-4, which is um, April did I say March? It says April 4th. April 4th is, um, oh, this is JavaScript, sorry. So April 4th is 4-4, uh, is four, four, and this is 362 days away. So the 3rd is 363. Or, or wait, what am I saying? So we're, we're going back. Ugh, I don't know. I kind of want to look at a calendar. Let's, let's pull up a 2017 calendar for a second. 2017 calendar. Jeez, I really can't type. Okay, so here's a calendar. We're looking at, so on the 3-3, three, three, there's 29 days away. So here's March 3rd, we're 29 days away. And uh, and I know I should be just doing this in my head. And 4-4, four, four, right here, we're 362 uh, days away. And then, so if we go back to the third, we're 363. 364 here we're 365 days away april 1st 
and then maybe it's a leap year. Uh, well, it's not a leap year because there's 28 days, right? So I think April 1st, April Fool's Day, is the is the the date in question. And so I think that what we want to do is we want to convert these two numbers into the the day uh, in that year, and then uh so like you know january 1st is the first day and then april or uh, sorry february 2nd is the 33rd day or whatever whatever date is 32nd day i don't know um and then we want to subtract that from april 1st and then take the absolute value that's that's what i'm thinking here so um let's just try and do that and then we'll see if uh we'll see if the answer works um so what we need to do is we need to have a list of the number of days in each year, uh, number of days in each month, um, so that we can, you know, add because you know January has thirty-one days and February is twenty-eight and so on and so forth. So let's uh, let's just um, make that list real quick. Um, so can I use okay days per month? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna ignore index zero. Or maybe we'll change that. But since we're using index one, uh, we're using the number one to represent January. Let's keep the indices aligned with the actual numbers we're using. So January has 31 days. February has 28 days. Uh, then we have 31, 30, 31, 31. 30, 31, and then we have 30, 31, 31. Okay. And then we have 30, 31, 30, 31. I know there's like a song or, or like a rhyme or whatever, but I don't remember it. So now we know the number of days per month, and now we know that A, and again, this is all just a theory. I could be completely wrong, but I'm saying that A is the month and uh, and b is the day and so what we want to do is we want to say um so let's just calculate we're going to convert the month and day into the day of the year so we're going to say for um uh i is going to start at one because again we're starting at one and we're going to say i is less than month right because we don't want to include basically what we want to do is we want to say um uh day of year is zero and so we want to loop through all of the months that have already passed. So in January, no month has passed, but in February, you know, all of January has happened. So we need to add all the days in January. So day of year will be days per month and index I. So, and then all we need to do, well, we can just start this as day because we're, we're adding, basically we're saying, this is the day in the current month. And then we're adding all of the days that have already passed. And then I think what I said is um, April 1st, uh, so April 1st is uh, 31 plus 28 plus 31, uh, so 90. And I think I said something like 90 minus um, day of year. And then I think we need, um, you know, absolute value. Maybe that's off by one, but that's sort of what I was thinking. So let's just see what happens. Uh, we're off by one. Maybe my, okay, come on. Maybe my logic, uh... okay, and then we're just getting, so so we're, we're on the right track, but instead of absolute value, we just need to say, um, we're gonna say if, uh, and I guess let's just declare right here. So I think April 1st is is what we want, and, and so we'll call that 90. And so we'll say, first of all, if the uh, day of the year is less, so if it hasn't been April 1st yet, then we're going to return 90 minus, or I guess, you know, we can use it, April 1 minus uh, uh, day of year. Otherwise, if it has already been passed, then we need to return uh, a full year minus uh, the day, something like that. And we're off by one again. Maybe I can change, maybe this was wrong. Maybe if I make that 91. Okay, this is, these. this test case here is not right. Um, it's not 365, it's like 365 
minus April 1st. There's something involved in there. 365 plus April 1st? I don't know. It's not 365. Okay. Let's see if this worked. Oh, we got it. It's just happy April Fool's Day is the, the, the only thing that's missing. Wow, that's really cool. So, okay, first of all, if day of year is actually April 1st, um, then we're supposed to return happy April Fool's Day. So let's just copy that. Happy April Fool's Day. And it should look like... Oh, we don't even need the escaping anymore. So this should work. Did we fail? What did we fail? Oh, no, we passed all the tests. Cool. Wow, that was... Uh... I'm actually kind of I'm kind of proud of myself for that one because um, we did all of that without and so this is smart they're using the date uh, class instead of you know all the stuff that I was doing I, I like that this is pretty ugly um, yeah they're using the date class again okay so a lot of these are using the date class and uh, Here's my solution. I guess not that many people solved it because mine showed up here. Um, cool. All right. I'm, I'm honestly pretty happy about that one because um, it wasn't a trivial solution, but we solved that one just by looking at the test cases. We didn't even have to look, except obviously, you know, April, uh, happy April Fool's Day. You had to, to, to test it. Um, but for everything else, you know, figuring out that it was referring to a month and a day and then figuring out April 1st and like all that logic. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy uh, with how this one turned out. So, all right, it's been an hour and 46 minutes, almost an hour and 47 minutes. I think I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and, uh, and call this one. But uh, for those who did stop by, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that this was uh, this was kind of interesting, and uh, and uh, yeah, there are some more of these problems. It seems like the rest of them are all JavaScript, which is fine. We could do JavaScript, um, and I see there's uh, another series uh, down here which I haven't looked at at all, but maybe we could look at that. So I don't know if uh, if there's any interest. I think this was a lot of fun, and it's something that we could do again. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for tuning in and, uh, I'll see you all in the, the next video, uh, that I happen to make. So, uh, yeah, have a good night.